Welcome to this Nordic Partner Webinar. Today we will talk about how to integrate Bluetooth direction finding with uBlocks. I'm very happy to see all the attendees here. So just a few words about uh, myself first. My name is uh, Petter Myhre and I'm a Product Marketing Director here at Nordic Semiconductor. I'll be your host today but uh, I will be mostly behind the scenes. So let me introduce uh, the main speakers today. Georgos Marakis. Hello. Hello everyone. My name is uh, Georgos Marakis and I am product manager, uh, part of the product strategy team for short range products at Ublox. And it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Um, Eric Harberg. Yeah, hello everyone. I'm Eric Kahlberg. I'm also product manager at Ublox and I've been working with our Bluetooth modules for, for a long time and, and also for our uh, with our Bluetooth direction finding products that we will talk about today. So I'm a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Then just quickly some uh, practicalities before we jump into the presentation from Ublox. So the webinar will last for approximately one hour, 40, 40 45 minutes uh, presentation, and then we will have a QA and a in the end. So please uh, put your questions in the top of the right sidebar. And uh, all questions are anonymous and try to keep them relevant to the topic, and we will answer them towards the end. You can also use the chat, but please please try to avoid using that for questions, but feel free to engage and discuss and, and so on. If you have more questions, you can go to DevZone for Nordic related questions. And uh, uBlocks also have uh, has a, a support portal where you can ask uh, questions to uBlocks. And as always, a recording of the webinar will be available together at, with the presentation at webinars.nordicsemi.com. Then I'll hand it over to Eric to start the presentation from your blocks. So thank you for the introduction, Petter. So from Ublox side, we wanted to show you a bit of what we have done in terms of Bluetooth direction finding product products. So we will first start with an introduction and a very short introduction to Ublox, the company, uh, then moving over to uh, um, a brief uh, presentation of Bluetooth direction finding the technology. And as I think most of you know, there was a, an excellent webinar last week that Nordic uh, provided. And if you are looking for details in the, to, into the technology of direction finding, I strongly recommend that, that session because that was awesome. Um, then we go over to uh, uh, the use cases that we have experienced with uh, Bluetooth direction finding and um, then moving on to the product offering that's coming from uBlocks, some demonstration and some words about how to get started, and then we'll wrap up with the Q&A. So an introduction to uBlocks then. So we are a Swiss company. Uh, we're listed on the Swiss Stock Exchange. Uh, our revenue for the first half uh, this year was uh, almost 300 million uh, Swiss francs. That's roughly the same in, in US dollars. So it's almost a one-to-one -one exchange rate right now. Uh, our guidance for the full year is, is a bit north of six, 600 million. Uh, our products serve three core markets, automotive, industrial, and consumer. Uh, we were founded in 1997, so that's 25 years ago, as a spin-off from the Technical uh, University in Zurich, the ETH. Uh, out of our revenue, the, uh, we spend um, almost 18% uh, into R&D. And we have a broad customer base, so we serve 14,500 14, customers worldwide. Uh, our employees are more than 1,200 uh, persons out of out of them, 66% are in R&D. And we have had a continuous growth. Uh, you're an example of 12.5% uh, per year uh, since, and since um, the introduction to the, to on, the, on the exchange. Um, the products that we offer is, uh, first of all, we have 
um, modules and chipsets for uh, for satellite-based uh, positioning uh, for outdoor uses. So that's GNSS, GPS, Galileo, uh, GLONASS, etc. We have cellular communication, uh, and we also have short-range connectivity with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. In the pos positioning product offering, we, ha we have developed our own chipsets, and also within cellular, we have in-house silicon for some of the segments. But for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, on the other hand, we have partnered with market leaders like Nordic, taking their ships, putting them into small form factor modules, and thereby facilitating a smooth, smooth integ uh, integration uh, into end products. On top of this, we also have a portfolio of services that enhances the uh, hardware-centric offering. These services are for location, communication, uh, and security, and that complements our other products. So that was a brief, very brief intro to, uh, to Ublox, and we move over then to Bluetooth direction finding and the main topic of this webinar. So as, as I think most of you know, Bluetooth 5.1's main feature was Bluetooth uh, was direction finding. And there are two methods uh, for determining direction, angle of arrival um, and angle of departure. And we will look more closely into angle of arrival because that's the technology that we have selected to use uh, for uh, asset tracking and indoor location uh, and indoor positioning um, use cases. So actually what we've seen with angle of arrival is that we can enable really high accuracy indoor positioning or we'll prove, uh, show some, some proof points of that uh, in, during this session. But as I said in the beginning, if you are interested in the details, the technology details of direction finding, I strongly recommend the Nordics webinar from, from last week, which uh, should be available from their website. We go on to next slide, thank you. Um, so this is a slide just showing briefly the, the architecture of angle of arrival. So on the left-hand side, you have um, the AUA transmitter, which has a single antenna, and it transmits, transmits a continuous wave. On the right-hand side, you have the AUA receiver, which uh, has multiple antennas and switches in between these antennas uh, and receives the signal on all of them. But, uh, but um, thanks to this switching pattern, uh, they can measure the phase, it can measure the phase difference between uh, the receiving antennas. And then the receiver is able to sample that phase information uh, and, and calculate the the incoming angle. And having the direction to the transmitter from several reference points, you can do a triangulation. Uh, and there, and, and by doing that, you can uh, then estimate the position of the transmitter. And using Bluetooth AOA, uh, we can get a positioning accuracy that is lower or better than one meter. And here is uh, an example of how uh, a uh, positioning system with a Bluetooth angle of arrival can look like. So you have the tag in the, in the bottom that transmits the, the advertisement messages. You have anchor points uh, which receive the messages with, uh, with their antenna array. And here uh, you calculate the angle of the incoming signal. So all of those three anchor points that you see here in the picture, all of them calculates the angle to the, to the transmitter. Um, so the, the, the readings from one anchor point gives you the angle, and then you can combine uh, readings from multiple anchor points in a positioning engine and calculate the position. So if we then continue to the use cases that we have uh, experienced uh, when working with the different customers in, in this, uh, with this technology and the product that, that we're offering. So obviously, indoor positioning is one, um, one um, use case, but we've found that there are many others that are uh, equally interesting. So the first one here we call follow me. So this is a device that follows a person or an object based on an angle uh, angle based on the angle to the person or the object 
So this could be a video camera that uh, follows a person moving in front of it. It could be a golf car uh, that follows the, um, the player on the, on the court. Um, another one is access control. And this is uh, a detection of how a, an object or a person is moving in front of a door or a gate. It could also be detecting if a certain person has passed through a door or a gate or a, or a vehicle like a forklift or, uh, and so on. Uh, and finally, collision, collision detection, where moving objects are detecting the angle at a distance to each other uh, in real time and avoiding uh, collision. And then, of course, we have the, the indoor positioning and the asset tracking, which is the most common use case uh, that uh, most people think about. Here is about finding and tracking an asset, uh, have an accurate inventory or uh, optimize uh, process in, in, a, in a factory. It could also be people tracking to locate a person or uh, when it comes to safety for workers or in emergency situations. You can analyze people flow in a building or you can personalize uh, the, the environment where a specific person is, is located. And finally, some applicable market segments for, for asset tracking. Um, so for example, in, in a hospital or a medical facility, tracking the equipment that you have may, uh, could, could help you reduce the, 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 the number of the units that you need for a specific, of a specific kind. For example, the hospital beds, if you know where all your hospital beds are, then you need, don't need to have an overhead of those. Or you can track the, the personnel, doctors and nurses, and, and make sure that they, they move most efficiently through, through the building. Factory, here you can track uh, forklifts and goods, robots and tools, making sure that your uh, production and manufacturing processes are optimized. Um, in retail domain, uh, an analysis of the consumer behavior um, could, could be very beneficial. Uh, and then finally, of course, warehouses to accurately track your inventory at all times. So with this, we now move over to the, the product offering that Ublox have uh, on um, in, within Bluetooth AOA, and I hand over to, to Georgios. Thank you very much, Eric. Um, so in the next section, I'm going to be walking you through the line of products that make up the Ublox Bluetooth into positioning solution and taking things from the beginning. Uh, Ublox is a market leader in outdoors position, positioning. So a couple of years ago, uh, when we decided to expand this expertise to cover the indoors uh, spaces as well, uh, we decided that Bluetooth was the right technology um, for accomplishing this. And we were lucky enough to have uh, a wide portfolio of uh, uh, Bluetooth modules most of them based on the Nordic semiconductor chipsets. And Nina before 11 in particular was the variant that was optimized for Bluetooth direction finding. And our team of developers um, worked on an angle calculation algorithm uh, that was implemented as a software package specifically for the Nina before 11 module. Um, and the specific software um, was called Uconnect Locate. Uh, what you can locate is it's uh, it's an in-house developed embedded software uh, that uh, performs high accuracy Bluetooth direction finding, and in particular the angle of arrival method described by the Bluetooth 5.1 specification. And in doing that, it uh, provides to our customer uh, faster time to market for their Bluetooth positioning products, and the angle calculation is efficiently implemented for the embedded MCU of the uh, NRF5283 chipset. Um, our talented team of software developers um, added more enhancements to it, such as suppression of multipath components, and of course, an easy to use command API that allows our customers to interface their application with our Uconnect Locate software. Uh, last but not least, Uconnect Locate has been built on the Nordic NRF Connect SDK, specifically version 210. 
So then, of course, we want to give uh, the chance to our customers to evaluate Nina before 11 and uh, you can locate. And we thought that the best way to do that was by designing an antenna board um, for it. So it's an antenna board that has five uh, antenna elements. Uh, it has Nina before 11 integrated and Nina before 11 runs the Uconnect Locate software. And we put this antenna board to two explore kits. Uh, we have Explore AOA 1 that uh, includes one antenna board and one tag. It's for evaluations of uh, a simple direction finding system. So you can move the tag and uh, monitor the angle uh, as it is displayed on a graphical user interface or uh, locked in the UART output of the antenna board. And we have Explore AOA 2 as well, which is a complete interpositioning system. And as Eric mentioned, and uh, uh, last week was covered at length by the Nordic webinar, in order to be able to, to track a tag and determine its position, uh, you need several angles coming from several antenna boards, and you need some mathematical operations such as triangulation in order to determine the exact position of the tag. And therefore, Explore AOE 2 has four antenna boards, so the four angles, uh, go to a uh, high resolution positioning engine that we developed. And in there, there's the mathematical operations like triangulations uh, that are performed. And the final action uh, uh, of the tag is displayed on a graphical user interface uh, developed by our partners, uh, Traxmate. A few more words on Traxmate. Uh, Traxmate is a complete enterprise asset tracking. It's uh, cloud-based. And uh, it's very easy to use. Our users uh, can can create buildings and upload floor plans uh, and manage the placement and configuration of the BLE anchor points uh, in, a, in a web browser. So there's a three month uh, evaluation license included with Explore AOA 2. And uh, um, it's, a, it's a very close cooperation that we have with Traxmate and it's a, a collaboration that will continue uh, in the future as well. So the feedback that we received from Explore AOA 1 and 2 has been overwhelmingly positive and uh, that motivated us to take things to the next step. So we took the antenna board that we designed and we added some uh, enhancements to it and some improvements. Uh, the most important of these were we uh, increased the number of antenna elements from 5 to 8 and we replaced the multiple RF switches with a single RF switch, thus minimizing errors and losses. And those two uh, improvements alone um, further improved the performance of the antenna board, but also we made a design that is optimized to go to high volume production. So this is no longer an evaluation product. This is a product that goes to mass production and can be purchased by um, our customers and integrated in a straightforward manner to their uh, end products. And that product is ANB10. Uh, it was launched earlier this year. And what ANB10 is, it's an antenna board that enables you to build and implement interpositioning systems. And by doing that, you reach optimal performance delivered by what I already mentioned, you can locate algorithms and the eight antenna elements and the single RF switch. But it's also a transition from proof of concept to mass production. So in the backside of ANB10, uh, you can see Nina B411, of, of course, the, the Bluetooth module, but to the right of it, there's a, uh, an off-the-shelf pin header. It's a readily available component. So uh, customers can easily source it and put the matching connector on their application board. And they can simply plug plug the ANB10 board to it and um, end up with a, with a complete anchor point. So, of course, we want to give the chance to our customers to evaluate ANB10, and uh, therefore we launched a third Explore uh, kit called Explore AOA3. Uh, this will be available in the beginning of next year, and this time we added an application board to it. Uh, so, EVB Antoine is an application board that comes with the Explore kit, and it's, of course, for evaluating and testing uh, ANB10. But by plugging the two boards together, you end up with a simple reference design um, of an anchor point within seconds. 
and um, it's a anchor point oriented explore kit um, so much so that it includes a, a plexiglass mounting panel that you can take out of the box and, and install it right where uh, it is meant to be operating as an anchor point. Uh, we also um, offer the schematics of the application board as well as the source code of the MCU so that you can modify it and uh, um, have a, a quick prototype for, for your own anchor point. A few more details uh, about the application board that is included with the Explore Kit. It has a, uh, a second Nina B411 Bluetooth module. Um, it has a Wi-Fi module by Ublox um, so that you can relay the angles and trans transport them uh, wirelessly. Or if you prefer a wired connection, there's an RJ45 connector uh, and power over Ethernet as well. Uh, there's a powerful MCU um, for which, as I said, we offer the, the source code so, the, so it can be modified and uh, you can write your own applications. And various other things like uh, connectors and switches. So, as I said, uh, uh, this kit will be available in the beginning of next year. So, recipients of NB10 samples that uh, evaluated it reported very good results and they were very happy with, uh, um, with the performance of the NB10 antenna board. Uh, but some of them uh, communicate to us that it would be very beneficial for them that um, uh, if they could use a, a smaller antenna board, a single area antenna board small enough to fit a, a small enclosure or, or a small casing. For them, uh, 3D interpositioning, as it is offered by NB10, was not necessary. Uh, their application um, could use 2D interpositioning just fine. And um, therefore, we took NB10, we removed several of its uh, antenna elements, and we left just three of them. Um, and we ended up with, with a very small uh, antenna board with dimensions um, 29.5 by 93.5 millimeters. So it's, a, it's an extremely small antenna board. Uh, it's ideal um, for um, calculating either the azimuth or elevation angle based on whether it's oriented horizontally or vertically. Uh, but everything else is uh, is the same as NB10. So uh, on the river side, you can you can see the NB10, uh, the sorry, the Nina B411 uh, Bluetooth module and the same pin header as NB10. So you can easily replace NB10 for NB11 in a setup like uh, Explore AOA3. So it's just as simple as unplugging one and uh, plugging the other. So NB11 is a is a new product. It was announced uh, only last week. So uh, we expect to, to have it available uh, in the beginning of next year for uh, prototyping and then uh, going to uh, initial production a few months later. So this sums up the, the line of products that we have available and that, that uh, comprise our uh, Bluetooth interpositioning solution. I would like to show a slide that has been covered at length uh, during last week. Um, Nordic uh, webinar, uh, but it's a, it's it, it's a good uh, opportunity to to summarize a little bit what our solution covers. Um, so if you think of the Bluetooth interpositioning signal chain, we have the antenna board that picks up the transmitted signals from the from the tag, and uh, drives the RF signals to the gray block there that represents Nina B411, and the first operation happens in the radio chipset. Uh, part of the NRF5283 chip. Uh, so this has the, the radio capabilities and then the stack that implements the, the Bluetooth specification. And what comes out of the stack is IQ samples. And these IQ samples um, are entering the, the Uconnect Locate uh, software uh, where the angle of arrival algorithm kicks in and performs uh, all the intense uh, measurements. And after some post-processing, what comes out of the Nina B411 is the final angle that you can use for your application as you see fit. It can be just uh, displaying the direction of the, of the tag, or it can be a more complex system like a positioning engine uh, that performs triangulation and uh, um, alongside the angles that come from other anchor points, uh, determining the exact position of the, um, of the tag. Um, so this is, um, what is uh, the uh, what is covered by the Ublox uh, interpositioning solution? In the next slide, I would like to 
describe a little bit the accuracy of uh, the system. So we have made several measurements. So here we are presenting measurements uh, taken from a typical average sized room in, a, uh, in our office. Uh, we just placed uh, four anchors in an eight by six meter room and uh, we started taking measurements and uh, this showed that uh, in 95 percent of these measurements the accuracy had an error um, the angle measurement had an error of below one meter and even better in 50 percent of these measurements the uh, error was below 0 0.6 meters so if you would like to translate that to degrees uh, the phase error was uh, um, uh, approximately five degrees of course, there's a lot of things that, that come into place and uh, the operating environment and the surfaces and the, uh, the geometry of the room, um, open spaces offer um, even better performance, uh, but um, this is a representative uh, use case and a representative set of measurements that show that uh, we achieve uh, below me one meter uh, accuracy at 95% of the uh, measurements. So, Next, I would like to show you a few demonstrations um, in the form of videos that we uh, that we shot using our products. The first video is uh, uh, is a simple angle detection demo setup. Uh, it's a follow me application, so we have a tag that moves inside the room, and uh, the signals are being picked up by a three element antenna. Uh, the uh, U-Blocks direction finding software you can locate performs the angle of arrival measurement, and out of the UART it goes to a, to a rotor that is connected to a camera and the camera follows the person that holds the tag uh, inside the room. So if we can start playing the, the first video. Thank you very much, Peter. That was our first demo video. So moving on to the to the second one. Uh, this time we have a complete into positioning uh, setup. Uh, we have placed six anchor points in our offices in Malmö, Sweden, and two of our colleagues uh, were holding tags in their hands and moving around the the room. Uh, we use the Traxmate um, as a tracking platform that I described earlier to set up the anchor points and configure them. Uh, we uploaded the floor plan and uh, on the graphical user interface provided by Traxman, you can see in real time the position of the tags that um, um, are being held by, by our colleagues. So if Peter can start the second video. Today we're going to show you how to set up the UBLOX Explorer AOA2 Explorer Kit for high accuracy indoor positioning with Bluetooth angle of arrival. The kit contains antenna array boards for the static anchor points, tags for the objects that we'll be tracking, and all the software needed to visualize their positions on a map. To make deployment smooth and efficient, we'll be using Tracksmate's asset tracking platform, which comes with integrated support for the UBLOX Explorer AOA2 Explorer Kit. This is where we'll be setting up the indoor positioning system. In this case, we'll be using Wi-Fi to transfer the angle estimates from the anchor points to the local positioning engine. To deploy the system, we open the positioning engine software and log into the Tracksmith platform. The next steps, which we did behind the scenes to save time, involve uploading a map of our building to Tracksmith and positioning our anchor points. Tracksmate 
makes it easy to configure details such as each anchor point's height and tilt. Once all the anchor points are deployed and configured, we're ready to start tracking. If we now grab a few tags and start walking around the office, their positions are displayed in real time in the Tracksmate tool. The Explore AOA2 Explorer Kit gives you all the components you need to set up and evaluate Bluetooth indoor positioning. Learn more about the technology and the Explorer Kit at ublocks.com. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Peter. Um, on the next section, I, I want to uh, guide you through uh, how to get started and how to get your hands on, uh, on our solution and uh, start making the, the most out of it. And uh, definitely the, the recommendation we have is to grab one of our three Explore kits. Uh, Explore AOA kits uh, will help you to get familiarized with our technology and our solution. Uh, but you will also be able to develop uh, proof of concept implementations uh, as well as discover new use cases and applications. So uh, uh, just as I said previously, Explore AOA 1 is uh, suitable for direction finding, um, evaluations and uh, applications. Uh, Explore AOA 2 is a complete interpositioning system and Explore AOA 3 is, a, is an anchor point focused um, a reference design. Uh, all three of them are Bluetooth 5.1 compliant and all of them support the, the latest um, uh, Nordic NRF Connect SDK version 2.1.0. Um, Explore AOA 1 and Explore AOA 2 are currently available, so you can purchase them uh, from uh, any leading distributor out there. Explore AOA 3 will be available at the beginning of next year, so uh, that will be also uh, an option in the uh, very near future. Uh, furthermore, you have more resources available uh, at, uh, that you can find in, um, in our website, uh, except for the uh, classical things like um, uh, product summaries and data sheets. We have um, every resource uh, that is available uploaded um, uh, on there. So you can uh, uh, get user guides for our Explore AOA kits. You can uh, find a user guide for the demo setup uh, that was shown in the second video. Uh, you can find very useful white papers. Uh, the AT commands manual is also available as well as the Uconnect Locate software. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the tag, uh, as well as the Explore AOA3 reference application board, uh, source code and schematics um, uh, are also available so that you can use them for, for your own needs. Um, as of recently, we are uh, uh, proud solution partners of Nordic and uh, all the products that uh, uh, we described today uh, have been developed as, as part of this close collaboration that we have with Nordic. And uh, we look forward to see the, the evolution of this partnership in, in the future. So to summarize, uh, Bluetooth 5.1 opens up a wide range of uh, new use cases. And we developed a, a technology that we demonstrated that the technology can deliver submeter accuracy. Uh, Bluetooth direction finding uh, has many benefits, uh, among them uh, low power consumption, a low cost of ownership, as well as a, as a huge ecosystem of devices that, that can be tracked. Um, so from evaluation to direction to direct integration uh, to your end product, Ublox um, is your natural partner for, for interpositioning. And uh, uh, Eric and I would like to, to thank Nordic for giving us the opportunity to talk about um, our solution and our products. And now we are ready to hear your questions and comments. Thank you for that uh, great presentation. Um, yeah, really cool demos. <laughs> Thanks. All right, yeah. There are lots of questions here in the, in the panel. So 
which is probably the first one. If anyone has tried using ship antenna instead of the patch antenna for direction finding, so to reduce the the the, the, the size of the antenna board. Um, well, to my knowledge, I've not seen it. Uh, we we have been working with different types of antennas in, uh, in within Ublox. We found that the patch antennas give you the give you uh, this performance that that we need. Um, we also, I mean, you should also keep in mind that there is you need to have a certain distance between the antennas, and that's essentially what sets uh, the dimension very much. So it's um, below 0.5 lambda uh, of uh, the, this, uh, the transmitter frequency. So that pretty much sets the dimensions. Um, so you will you will still not save that much, even if your, your antenna element was, was smaller. Um, another question is, is there any way of getting carrier phase information from the receiver? Um, so the carrier, phase um i'm not sure if um that's referring to the cte um waveform that we use in our receiver to measure the phase difference among the antenna elements um so yeah the carrier phase information is is what uh, our algorithm uses in order to to measure the angle of arrival um so, so, so we, we don't uh, we don't output that information so we are output the angle uh, information from, yeah. the, from the from uconnect locate then there is a question about time sync um, between the the anchors and, and and no you don't need to have like nanosecond level uh, uh, time syncs between the anchors that can be sorted on on, on a higher level uh, the, um, of course depending on on the accuracy you need or the the uptake rate but but typically these systems are not like microsecond um synchronized or microsecond updates it's, it's it's rather second update so there, there's no need for for synchronization uh when can we expect to be able to track hundreds or thousands of assets with uh angle of arrival um very soon i hope with uh, uh the ublock solution so uh right now we we um uh, on, on the on a given anchor point on a, on a given antenna board um we can uh, track up to uh, 64 tags simultaneously. So that is relying on a single uh, a module, on a single chipset, on a single antenna, on a single anchor point. If we address this um, on a on a system level, uh, then we can increase this number sig significant, significantly. So we are actively working on uh, implementing schemes uh, where we are um, doing round robbing measurements of uh, the tag so that we can increase uh, the number or we can um, add uh, capabilities like uh, tra um, tracking only moving tags and ignoring those that are stationary um, or even some more dynamic schemes that can increase this number um, even further so we are actively working on increasing this number significantly Yep, then, then the question, uh, the next question is why Bluetooth 5.1 is chosen instead of UWB for positioning? So I don't think it's a question of choosing um, uh, one or the other. I mean, they, they are good for both, uh, they're, they're both good technologies. Uh, UWB has an excellent accuracy when it comes to positioning. However, it comes to the cost of, um, power consumption and also the the soc uh, the chipset cost is higher for uwb uh, meaning that um, it's harder to make it battery operated it's more harder to scale in, in in thousands of tags like the the, the, the last questions it, it, it will cost you more so it's a question of two technologies that are complementing each other in, in, in our view What's the interface between anchor points and computer cloud? Is it LAN, TCP, IP, MQTT, or something else? Um, so that that depends entirely on the application board and uh, um, your your specific uh, uh, use case. So um, the interface between the the anchor point and the and the uh, application board is something that um, uh, is dependent on the NINA before eleven module. So for the time being, we have UART, but we have uh, the option to add more interfaces like SPI uh, in the future. Uh, but then 
between the application board and uh, the computer or the cloud is, is down to the application. It can be any of these uh, protocols that you, that you mentioned. Um, it's down to the design of the application board. All right, thank you. Um, next question, does Ublox provide the angle solver? Uh, how can it be integrated with customer applications and are there licenses involved? So the angle solver, I guess, that's the, what we call the Uconnect Locate software that runs uh, on the NRF52H33 ship on, on the antenna board. So that comes with the, uh, that comes with the, the Explorer kits, as uh, we explained. Um, and it's integrated, it comes with an H command interface and you will get um, the angle da data out on the UART interface. Um, there are no licenses involved in, in, the, in the Explorer kits. However, for the, for the end product integration, the, the, there is a license scheme set up. What kind of algorithm you're using for position calculation? Are you using some filtering based on Kalman filter or similar? Uh, we spend a lot of time evaluating different algorithms out there. Um, uh, so our team of experts settled on a PDDA-based algorithm. Um, uh, and regarding filtering, yes, Kalman filtering is, is uh, definitely one of the tools that um, we've used as, as part of our solution. Um, then there's another question about the number of tags uh, that can go with the solution. So as uh, Jordi explained, um, depending on how you set up your system, for example, tags that are not moving, it uh, would probably be wise to not track them, both for the battery life of the tag and for the system capacity overall. Um, and there are different schemes on, on how, to, how you can add uh, hundreds or have hundreds or, or even thousands of tags in, in, a, in a system. Of course, the update rate of each tag is also uh, will also affect uh, the, the, the number. What range are you expecting customers to see? Um, that That is a, a, a very a widely discussed subject. And it was also covered by the Nordic webinar and uh, uh, the bottom line is that it depends. It, it, one space from the other is, is completely different and there's a lot of uh, factors that affect this, uh, such as the um, uh, operating environment, the surfaces, the um, the geometry of the room. Um, so it, it can vary from from a few tens of meters um, and up to hundreds of meters. So obviously, you know, um, an open space is um, is going to have a, a wider range than a narrow room. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, there's a lot of uh, things that uh, depend on on uh, each deployment that will affect the maximum range. Um, and then well, there is a question of uh, if we can you do you extend this to 3D positioning? Um, and yeah, actually we we have I, we have tested that. Uh, I can with our partners TraxMate, We have tracked a, a Georges was flying a drone in our in our office. There was a big atrium hall where, where we flew a drone and and um, and that there's actually a video on that on, on YouTube. I, I think you can find it by uh, by searching for Ublox there. Um, so have a look at that. It's, it's fun at yeah. least. So AB10 is capable of, of uh, calculating two angles at the same time, uh, both one corresponding to azimuth, with the other to elevation. Therefore, you can do 3D positioning. Um, are you also calculating angles on NRF5283? Um, well, the uh, NRF5283 is a chipset that, that we have integrated inside the NINA B411 module. Uh, the, the, um, uh, the calculation it, itself, the, the angle of arrival calculation happens um, uh, outside of the chipset. So the chipset gives out IQ samples as was covered by the Nordic webinar. Uh, there you can find a, a lot of information on, on uh, uh, what is covered by the chipset and what is covered by the, uh, the uh, integrated um, uh, module. But, but George, the, the angle as such is, is calculated then in the in the, the cortex m4 in, in the, the in the, the cpu the, yes the, yeah so not the radio that produces no, the no. Uh, yeah, yeah. that converts so. the signals sorry i misunderstood the question yes in, in that yeah, way yeah. yes of course it's uh, it, it that also happens inside the cpu of the nrf 5283 yeah. yes thanks uh, then there are two questions about um, uart connection so the np11 has a uart connection so the, the angle data is output on on the on the uart connection and 
also on the Explorer AOA free, there is possibilities to from the application board right to get an uh, uh, UART connection out if, if that's preferred. Uh, yeah, I believe that that's a very similar question on top. Explorer AOA three have a UART connection, um, so um, yeah. So uh, as I said, you can you can take the 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 UART interface from the Nina before eleven and uh, uh, from the uh, Anbi ten board and drive it to any of the uh, external interfaces of the Explorer AOA three application board. So this can be um, Ethernet or it can be Wi-Fi or it can be a uh, USB or, or anything. Um, does the Ethernet interface on the EBB Antoine carrier board have hardware timestamping? This would allow a set of anchor uh, receivers to be set frequency synchronized. Um, I believe so, because that's one of the um, applications that we are um, uh, planning on testing. So um, I, I believe that it has this capability, but um, I will have to check with uh, with our hardware designers to to give you a more uh, comprehensive reply. Right. Uh, yeah. The next question: Can NP10 be used for custom designs products that are not by UBlox? So yes, that's the idea of the NP10. It should be it's it's done to be integrated into into customer designs of any kind that that you prefer. Um, so that's that's. Uh, Essentially, a, a component, a subcomponent in in the, in the, the, the system. Mm -hmm. uh, will you be releasing the source Gerber's algorithm for for these products? Um, yes, for for some products. So, for example, uh, for the tag uh, that we give with our Explore kits, as well as the reference application board that comes with Explore AOA three. Yes, we will give out uh, schematics as well as the source code for the MCU that is on the application board. Um, uh, that comes with Explore AOA 3. Uh, the algorithm, if you mean the angle of arrival calculation algorithm, the Uconnect Locate software, we will not uh, give the source code for that. All right, then there's a question. If we have three uh, receivers in an AOA system and they are spaced 50 meters apart, and can um, uh, if one of them can be used to triangulate the, the AOA signal, I believe that's uh, what the question is. So, um, I, you could you could have your triangulation done in in one of the anchor points, having that uh, kind of a, a master anchor point, if you like, that collects the data from the others. That's that's possible. It's not something that you would do in the NRF fifty two eight forty three ship, but it would be done in the in the in a host processor. Um, could you reflect on, on power consumption in a use case of your choice as a, as an example? Um, well, the power consumption depends on, on several factors such as uh, uh, the update rate and uh, um, there's um, typical values that you can you can find in, in our data sheets um, that we have uploaded on, on our web page. So I would uh, uh, recommend that you refer to, to these typical values that are included in our data sheet. Okay. Uh, the first video demonstration, how many anchors did you have uh, uh, set up there? Uh, and that was only one, one anchor point, be just... Um, Behind the camera, there was uh, one following the, the 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 person moving in front of it. Uh, it sends IQ or angle to Truxmate. Um, so the input to Truxmate is the um, it's uh, it's the position actually. It's not it's not the angle. So so basically, what happens uh, in between the 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 ambit and the Truxmate? uh there needs to be a positioning engine which is external to the antenna board so the positioning positioning engine collects angles from various antenna boards and performs the mathematical operations such as triangulation and it's the output of the positioning engine that goes in in the trucks mate platform hmm. Um, then there's a question about um, sport watches. So many consumer products such as sport watches and heart rate monitor use uh, chest, chest strap, use older Bluetooth versions. We expect these kind of devices to move to Bluetooth 5.1 and enable the CT function feature. Uh, well, the honest answer is I, that I don't know. Um, for um, This is 
not a, a domain where where we are that active in in the, this kind of product so I'm, I'm afraid we we don't have an answer to that i can try to answer it okay. yeah. <laughs> go ahead thank you Peter. i mean uh, the the socs that we provide uh, they uh, they provide these functionalities as standard and so it's possible for customers to enable this but it's a bit of a chicken and an egg uh, problem if you don't have the the systems around to kind of uh, take advantage of this then it doesn't really make sense to have the functionality in the product either but if if this is something that is adopted in for example airports or other places then this is something that uh, um, product manufacturers can put into their products and yeah uh what is the advertising interval of the tags in the demo what is the approximate battery life for the tags in that uh advertising rate um unfortunately i, I can't remember that off the top of my head um I, I, i'm not um but it, it must be it, it's not a, a, a very high um advertising rate uh, it's just uh, it was just done for for demo purposes so i believe it's a it's a few um at angle measurements per second um a few hertz at least so again i would uh, i would uh, kindly ask you to refer to our documentation for uh um the power consumption values so that you can um determine uh, the the approximate battery life for that yeah and next question is what's the delay between the tag being moved and and uh, this movement being represented in the gui uh, on the demo video, it seems that is around one second, so re reactiveness is not high. Well, yeah, it's probably that uh, second um, time is probably what you what we're looking at. Uh, this is not a kind of uh, ultra fast uh, um, system, both um, both in terms of the calculations that needs to be done and. Uh, and the, the, um, the transport of this um, data up to, to the cloud-based um, GUI. So it's, it's in the second, um, one second is probably uh, accurate here as, as you referred. Um, is it possible to use another algorithm th with a Ublox pre-processing? Uh, no, this is not possible. So if you, um, uh, if you, if, if by, Pre-processing, you mean the antenna board? Uh, the antenna board comes with uh, Nina before eleven, um, uh, so um, that 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 is uh, that is not a possibility. No. Let's see. So, can you give us an idea of the static angle accuracy at ten meters? So. Uh, we say that the typical accuracy is around five degrees. Um, that's what we've uh, measured with it with our uh, with our kits. So that's uh, and ten meters is probably an accurate uh, a distance that should be fine. Uh, when multiple receivers are used in angle of arrival computation, can one receiver be fixed and two receivers be mobile? I believe that this was covered by the Nordic webinar um, last week, and uh, it is possible, but it's uh, it's a bit challenging. Um, so I would refer you to to this webinar, but it's a, it's a tricky situation. Um, I, I believe it is feasible, but that's not a, a typical use case that we have uh, put to test. Yeah, uh, outside of asset tracking, what areas do you expect the most growth, short term and long term? Well, we believe part of the use cases that we described in the beginning, uh, like access control or, or different kind of follow me applications. Uh, it could be um, um, air purifier following a user or a tag, so you can do, uh, easily direct it to where you want to have uh, the fresh air. Uh, those kind of applications we've seen, so I think those those we expect to be uh, to be growing. Uh, to measure an angle, theoretically, two antennas are needed. Um, 
more of a statement. Uh, <laughs> but I, but yeah, but to get get uh, any good performance, you we have found that three antennas is is needed to handle multi-path effects and uh, and um, so on. Yeah. Um, yeah, how the tags are identified from from each other. Um, so each tag uh, has a, a unique ID. Uh, so by by tracking the angle at the same time, we uh, we output the the unique track uh, the unique ID that each tag has. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the advantage with three or eight antennas? Well, obviously, with uh, with eight antennas, you have a more robust uh, system you have more antennas to to uh, use for for your calculations and more more data essentially so, so that gives a more more accurate and more more reliable or robust result but we've um, we've seen that we can in good uh, we can see really good results also with the free antenna um, solution and that's the the benefit with the free antenna is of course that it's it's smaller and and, and it's uh, faster um, how does the accuracy of location compared to ultra wideband? Um, I believe that th this has also been covered um, in at length. Um, ultra wideband, in terms of uh, of accuracy, has a has an advantage uh, compared to uh, to Bluetooth because of uh, the technology um, it uh, it employs. But um, um, there's all other things that also um, affect the. Um, the comparison between ultra wideband and, and Bluetooth, uh, such as the, the power consumption as well as the cost of ownership. Um, additionally, Bluetooth is is capable of uh, of tracking more devices. There's a there's a vast ecosystem of, of devices that can be tracked by Bluetooth, especially as uh, the Bluetooth 5.1 specification is uh, uh, is is um, um, has more devices uh, that support it. All right. Uh, is there any limitation about the beacon position? Example, should it be between 20 and 80 degrees? Yeah, well, it's a good, good question. Uh, typically, the, the antenna will not cover the full range, 180 degrees in front of you. So we, we estimate something like 15 degrees on both sides that um, where, the, um, where the results are, are, are worse um, than, than in the, the main, the main uh, area in front. Uh, so, so something like that, 15 degrees on both sides. Um, are samples available? Um, uh, if you mean samples for for NB10, uh, the antenna board, yes, there 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 are samples available. Um, NB11, we will also have uh, samples, prototype samples available in the beginning of of next year. Um, so you can get in touch with uh, uh, a, a Ublox, your lo local Ublox sales representative or, or FAE and uh, uh, we can we can take it from there. Explore A, the Explore kits, as I said, Explore A, A O E one and two are available uh, as we speak in uh, any of the leading distributors, and Explore A O E three will also be available in the beginning of next year. Uh, would a line of sight between a ten and a tag impact performance? Eh? And yes, um, so a line of sight gives gives you good good performance. If you don't have line of sight. Well, then performance is worse. Um, you don't necessarily need line of sight between uh, your your tag and the and, and free antenna boards to get a position. You could see in the in the video where we where one of the persons were walking into a conference room where there was only one antenna board in that room, uh, while the other ones where there, there was a line of sight to that one, of course. But then the other antenna board they, they, there wasn't a line of sight, but still we could position that person pretty accurately. And uh, does Ublox provide production ready anchor or antenna board? Um, uh, the antenna board is, is production ready, so we will go to initial production at the beginning of next year. Uh, in terms of anchor, uh, we have the antenna board and we have a reference design for the application board that you can take the schematics and uh, apply it to, to your needs. Um, so yeah, the antenna board, yes, the uh, the complete anchor point. Uh, we will give you the reference design for the application board if if you need it. Mm -hmm. Then there is a question about if there is a solution for working with mobile phones uh, and and the antenna array. Um, then 
To, to my knowledge, there are no mobile phones yet that provides the CT functionality that is needed on the tag side. So unfortunately not. Does Ublux provides the positioning engine? Yes, we have a, a, a reference positioning engine that we give with, with our Explorer AOA2 kits. Um, so you can you can use that uh, for, for that setup. And um, of course, um, depending on on your needs, we we may able to to help to help you apply it to your to your use case as well. Yeah. Uh, have you attempted multi floor environments? Would you use one set of antennas per floor? Yes, you would need that. You would need to have uh, separate antennas uh, on each floor uh, to uh, determine the the position correctly. Uh, oh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm lost. Um, there's a question. Uh, is there a relationship between the installation height and coverage area? Um, yes, uh, there there is a uh, there there is a radiation pattern or a specific radiation pattern that uh, that um, um, each uh, of our antenna board has. Um, so. Based on that, yes, there there's, there, there will be um, an effect on on um, at the coverage area depending on on how high the antenna board is is installed. Um, Ambitent that has uh, both azimuth and elevation angles, it has a, a better coverage if you place it on a on a ceiling uh, up up high, so you can uh, you can have better coverage with Ambi 10 compared to Ambi 11 that has only a single uh, array of elements. Okay, thank yep. you. Uh, and then there's a question that Ublox would be willing to sell samples if we don't have if there isn't any ongoing uh, uh, customers. Well, of, co of course, uh, we the, as uh, George just explained, the Explore IoT one and IoT two are already available on on the AOA. AOA, sorry, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> We have another IoT kit, yeah. Uh, so they are already available to from from uh, the, the global distributors. Uh, the the NP10 is also will once it's uh, once we have ramped that up that production in Q1, that will also be available for anyone to to purchase. So there's there's no restrictions on on, on that. And I believe that that's the final question, unless I'm mistaken. Um, yeah. no, what's the okay. positioning uh, latency? real-time scenario um that depends on the positioning engine uh, that you're uh, that you're deploying um so uh, it depends on what how fast the mathematical operation how fast the triangulation happens how much filtering or smoothing there is in the uh, in the received angles um so it depends it can be fractions of a second or it can be several seconds okay then I think we're a few minutes uh, over time and we have answered all the questions. So that's uh, that's really good. Thank you, Eric and uh, Jürgen for uh, for presenting and answering all the questions. And thank you to everyone out there watching. Thank you very much, Peter, for giving us the opportunity to present thank our you. solution. And uh, we welcome any questions you may have. Uh, um, you can reach us um, after the webinar and we'll be happy to address them as well. Great. And lastly, I uh, just want to remind everyone to uh, regi register for our upcoming Nordic Tech webinars. You can do that at uh, www.nordicsemi.com webinars. Thank you. Have a good one.